My name is Grant Pierus. I work with Susan White. Susan White uh, uh, owns two companies, Iggy Interior Design and Phoenix Interior Design. Now today we're talking about Iggy Interior Design, which is a, a luxury high-end interior design uh, firm that has been running for 20 years. It works with celebrities, VIPs, royalty, some incredible people, and has also been featured in magazines like the Architectural Digest, um, Great British Telegraph uh, campaigns with them, um, all sorts of interesting things. So Susan, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and get moving with the masterclass? Of course. Well, first of all, hello to everybody, and I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Um, and again, just personally, I just like to thank the NHS and all the care homes out there for all the wonderful help over this terrible virus issues that we've had. So thank you. Okay, everybody, um, I'm going to start you off um, with just a little intro into me. Um, so my name is Susan White. Um, as Grant very kindly has mentioned, I own two companies and a third one where we're building our first eco-friendly carbon neutral house, uh, which is what we'll be moving forward on to at a later date. I'd like to just give you an insight into what I've been doing over the 20 odd years um, and how I've built up my client base and my experience. Um, so I just want to pass on as much information over to you guys, which will help you uh, produce an amazing interior. So if I start with um, how to add the right color palette. Now the problem for us interior designers, there are over 9 million colors to choose from. So it does become a bit tricky. Oh, Susan, sorry. Yeah. There's a bit of an echo. Um, could you, I think you need to just turn the volume down on your computer. Okay. How about now? Okay, just speak. Can you hear me now okay? Turn the volume right down on your computer. Yeah. Okay. Perfect, we can hear you fine. There we go, Wonderful. that's working. Is that okay everyone? <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Thanks everyone. Fine. Okay, so I will just restart again. I'll just say about the problem of us interior designers are over nine million colors to choose from. So which is the right color? Um, we need to consider that this color, these colors need to look great throughout the whole day. So these are some of my tips um, to create a successful color palette for an interior. Of course, there's a color wheel, so I would use it. It's your best friend. And you really can't go wrong with it. The hard work's already been done for you. Consider what the space is going to be used for, what mood you want to create. Warmer colors are stimulating, so great for studies and dining rooms. Cooler tones are more relaxing, so great for bedrooms, etc. Has the client got existing art, furniture, accessories uh, that you don't want to change? If so, then you have to pair it with a form of neutral color. These are brilliant. They're very versatile as a base color. Then you can start using tonal colors or complementary colors. Complementary colors sit opposite the color wheel. I just want to show you that um, to help you on the slide that I've produced for you. So as I said, complementary colors sit opposite the color wheel. Tragic colors are colors which are equally spaced out on the wheel, allowing for more colors and options to play with. So here's the first slide of the neutral colors, adding in client's own neutral uh, upholstery and how we've emphasized using colors um, with their object dar and their existing furniture. Again, on this slide here, we've got neutral tones, but of course we've got to consider uh, the light and what the space is being used for. So we had a dark, a very dark floor in one of the bedrooms, but what was interesting about this space was the natural light coming through and all the white colors that we use to emphasize the shadows. This is an example of the color wheel I just discussed very briefly at the beginning using primary colors. Some primary colors obviously are quite bright, but they can still be fun by the time you've used a neutral palette, i.e. Uh, the bed here and the pod chair are all in shades of grey. 
the primary colours again I've used in here for highlighting interesting spaces. So a snug and study play out area with Union Jack curtains. And of course a study above where the joinery paint colour was actually used uh, very primary in a, a bright blue. But then we started using the secondary colours as a tonal to bring the whole scheme together. Secondary colours here again, you can see I've got a neutral base colour. Um, uh, the snug above um, has got the secondary colours of the pinks. Uh, the item pictures below are the secondary colours of greens and of course of a coat cupboard front door space. You have to consider the light. South facing rooms appear warmer than north facing rooms. I would always suggest uh, using the paint, chosen paint colour on a piece of backing wallpaper or piece of paper and hang it in the space. You can see how the natural and artificial light changes the colour. Furnishings also have a massive impact um, in the paint colour that you've chosen. Light bounces out of all textures uh, and textiles um, when light hits it. So a good tip is to place a swatch of textile on the floor or the wall just to see how it changes the paint colour. And that's exactly that, what we have done with all of these. Desaturation or neutral colours start from a primary colour where black and white has been added. This is so important because you need to understand what the primary pigment colour is. Uh, this will help when choosing, say, greys, for instance. We all know that greys can take on a greenish or lilac tone. So, uh, for instance, this uh, slideshow here are all tonal colours, all mixtures of black and white, basically. Um, it also shows how textures like the polished cement floor or the metal resin wall in the study, how the light bounces from it. So it really helps uh, with an interesting space. Textures as well add a lot of visual interest um, and colours change dramatically where light sources are hit um, up against um, and textures do change because you get a lot of shadowing. So it's in very important when we get to the lighting uh, discussion how areas are going to be lit and how to light them. Um, it's, it's very interesting how light changes colour so it's so important to have your colour wheel or at the beginning of the process. For me, I really love textures, as you, can, as you can see from the previous slides. I love colour and I love frivolity. So I like to have a bit of fun with our designs. Um, I think a good design is about discovery. So uh, for me, I need to see, feel and touch um, and experience all the products I'm going to use. It's important to take your client on that exciting journey with you. It's very rewarding and you end up with an amazing award-winning interior. Now, lighting is absolutely crucial. I can't tell you it is a, um, it's an art form all on its own. So it is so important that we start off on the right footing uh, with what light source you're going to be using for each area and space. Normally I would collect the brief from a client. You almost have to get inside the client's head. You have to extract the information, tap into their psyche, uh, work out really what their brief actually means to you um, and how you can produce an amazing interior at the end of it. You have to almost dissect the room. Uh, it's scale, um, lighting, flooring. You use it as basically a, a 3D box in your head and then you start layering on top of that space in your head. How's it going to be used for instance? You know you have to plan and zone the space. Um, is it a living room, study, uh, kitchen etc. For me I like to take the brief from my client and then start researching. I like to interview all members of the family and I like to get a, uh, an individual brief from each and every one of them. It takes them on that journey as well and they really enjoy the experience. I normally start taking um, tear sheets, inspiration information that I've taken from a client um, and I put them all on a board. Um, this is part of the, the fun, it's the messy part of interior design so my design studio is littered with samples. Then you start condensing. 
so over a period of time it's worth going back to it revising it it also clears and balances the mind so you start in the right direction to begin with then you start to plan once you've decided on the furniture layout artwork joinery positions you can start plotting the lighting this is the crucial part so you have to kind of work out what sort of lighting you want uh, do you want to uh, wash uh, a floor or wall so a wash of lighting task lighting mood lighting accent lighting all of these we have to consider in every individual space not only that of course you've got your natural light coming through then there's other little tricks you don't have to just deal with um, electrical lighting there are of course amazing non-electrical sources of light like candles a fire for instance all of these throw out different colors that create a mood for the space this is one example of um, uh, an idea of backlit onyx or you can do that with various stones it creates a lovely harmony it's very subtle um, and it's interesting we want to make our spaces interesting to look at it's all about emotion um, and you want to feel um happy when you go into each space so important central light sources uh, are generally where we kind of start uh, but unfortunately these throw out a lot of shadows so the trick is to add and use indirect light to create a comfortable light only in the areas that you need it so direct downward light is unfortunately a bit unflattering so if you can avoid it absolutely avoid it unless of course um, you want to use that for makeup that's a, a, a very different um, idea and solution and then you would add lighting around a mirror so use wall lights floor washers these are great because these actually arch uh, the light um, on walls and floors um, and it softens so again the space becomes interesting um, and again, it just follows the flow all the way through the spaces. LOD, LED shadow caps are great. Sorry, that's my dogs. <laughs> um, and these often lead the way. Task lighting is great. So we use task lighting for when we need to work. Ideally, these would always be dimmable. So if you need to soften, then you've got the capability and the option to dim the task lighting mood lights as well these help you unwind and relax it's great for well-being it's a gentle glow um, you can achieve this very very simply by using a five amp circuit also please make this dimmable then of course um, use non-electrical for mood lighting as i said before candles fireplaces etc excellent light and a great uh, for joinery um, these highlighted um, areas which would otherwise be quite dim and they display some of Rob J. Dahl. Um, again, this is a really nice way of accessorizing and highlighting your very personal objects. I suppose with anything, pulling all this lighting together, it gives you the flexibility and the controllability. It makes each space more interesting and dynamic. Now there are lovely little options out there which perhaps you might not have seen or considered before. Um, LED wallpaper um, is a great source of lighting. It's interesting. You can just have dribbles on some feature walls, um, but it just um, highlights the fact that you wouldn't know it, but your eye is actually drawn to these interesting spaces. You also don't have to conform uh, with lighting. You know, you don't always have to have central pendants or um, LEDs or down lights. You can push them to the side so on the side I'm showing you now this was an entrance hall again these are all tonal colors and we wanted to highlight the fact that these are tonal colors so these are basically blacks and whites which make grays so we put the runway as we call it off centered to the hallway it gives you this lovely runway feel which actually leads you to the double doors which is off centered so you don't always have to think about central lighting the LED, which is um, we use on a wall, um, 
on this slide to the left hand side that was carved into the wall with a zigzag detail again it just gives a little bit of interest it just shows what can be done we had a polished cement floor here as well so it's so highly polished that you've got the reflection of the light on the floor so again really very interesting a little bit different um, but you know design is all about fun and experimenting Bedside pendants, we don't always have to have a, a table lamp. So these, the one on the left hand side with Mick Jagger image there, that's more of a task light because it directly shows uh, where perhaps your, your glass of water would be or a book of a night time. Um, but it just shows there's so many different applications to these types of lighting. Then you could have something really quite pretty, the bulb lighting on the right hand side. It just softens the space, it's perhaps a bit more romantic. All of these were dimmable, so you have the option. Runways and details, again, really interesting. So again, you don't have to deal with just a central pendants. So the uh, slide on the right hand side, we've got two runway recessed track lighting. Again, uh, the whole point of this uh, was to show people as they come in, there's a point of interest. Light again is so important, we, we had to consider the natural lighting and we needed some natural light in this space. So the, we moved the staircase in this application, we made it the core, uh, the spine of the building. Because we wanted natural light to come through, um, we made the staircase um, open tread. Um, again, it's visually interesting and exciting. You walk in and you've got plenty of other spaces to look at and feast upon. You know, your, you know, your eyes are doing all the uh, talking for you. You want to be excited, you want to balance and you want calm. So absolutely, we like to use interesting details, even little um, LED spotlights inside the recess of the pocket door. Again, it just brings a little bit of interest. So, you know, of night time, you don't have any lights on apart from the PIR uh, recessed light fitting inside the door, sliding door, pocket door recesses. Again, here uh, we are in a subterranean uh, um, swimming area and spa area. So again, you need to have the light. Um, it's important so you can see where you're going, obviously, the follow through. And again, what's behind that corner? You want it to be interesting. So you need the lighting to make things really exciting. Um, and you can see um, on that particular application, I had a very textured wall at the back, which we highlighted with uh, down like wash lights. So there was lots of different interesting lighting in one space. Floor lights again, they lead the way. Um, so you can see on this application, uh, we put them in the thresholds. Um, and also we added the LEDs to the joinery. Um, again, it just highlights your object dar and it has a bit more of interest rather than keeping it flat. All dimmable, of course, you have the application of whether you wanted the floor washers or the joinery LEDs to be illuminated or not. Then of course, leave it up to nature. Of course, what we want is to see a lot more light uh, coming through, um, natural light, should I say, coming through. So um, we always start with the natural light and just see how this uh, affects the space and the colours. Very calming. This is also a subterranean uh, apartment we did in London. Um, it was actually a converted NEC car park. So it's part subterranean. Now what we did, we carved up the space. So we wanted the natural daylight to come through, um, which made us have a double height um, above the joinery in the living space. We had a bit of fun in here. So we added in um, a handmade ladder actually. Um, so you could actually reach the windowsill, but it was more of a, a, an interesting object dar detailing. We had pendant lights in here. Uh, they were made from coconut shells and bleached white. We then had five amp uh, light um, to the lamp bases. We had ceiling lights, uh, we had feature lights and task lights. So everything that I've just discussed was actually incorporated in this one space. So it had moods, it had zones, it was interesting, um, nighttime and daytime. Again, what was interesting about this space, it was all tonal. So we had uh, shades of blue actually in here, uh, baby blues with 
hot spots of white and black to give it the punch. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, it's all good, Susan. All good. Yep. We have one question so far. Okay, so we, ha we have right, one Right, okay, question. now. Oh. How architecture influences a design and how we can change to suit our living habits. This is so important, especially now. We're all have been isolated. Going outside is tricky. Now we need to talk about how our interiors are possibly going to change. I think what we've learned over this tricky period of time is people working from home. And I foresee this happening more often. Um, and we will all, as companies, we'll all become very comfortable with our teams working from home. So we have to be conscious of our home environment and our zone. So how do we do this? There are plenty of spaces in, in areas which perhaps we need to think about converting into more of a stagnant working space area. This, for instance, here, um, this zone, it's actually in a living space, uh, but of course you can easily convert this to your study space. We have to think about things like that. We need to make sure that our well-being is thought about. Um, we need the positive energies flowing through when we're working from home. We need to think about the colours, how influenced. We know that green is a soothing colour and it de-stresses, so perhaps the study should end up being painted green, for instance. However, we also know that yellow is associated with power, self-esteem and communication. It actually increases concentration and memory. We know that 400% of anything yellow in cells has shot up over the past year. It's a happy color. So positive colors are actually beneficial and we should really think about that moving forward with our interiors. It doesn't have to be splashed on all the walls. It can just be hot spots of color. But we need to be aware that we just need a bit of fun and energy um, in our well-being and day-to-day -day life. Even. This is another indoor converted study, actually. I like to have a bit of fun using new products. Uh, this wallpaper, for instance, uh, it was taken from a couple of pages of The Great Gatsby, uh, new from Andrew Martin. You know, it's a bit of fun, we like a bit of frivolity. Um, so again, I paired that uh, with a lot of green uh, greenery. So the plants um, actually are real. Um, they suck in all the uh, dirty air, convert it, uh, they oxygenate the space and the room. It's a bit of fun. Um, so we, we like to do that. Just think about the space and how you're going to enjoy it storage is so key you know it's very hard to work from home if you've got litter and bits and pieces everywhere i call it organized mess so please don't look at my study at home but i know where everything is but i think that's my creative mind um, i collect all sorts of things uh, and i have piles but i know what each pile stands for uh, so working from home we have to stick to a discipline uh, and and keep keep that in mind um, because otherwise we won't be able to concentrate now, of course, with outdoors, we're all desperate to get outdoors. Some of us are very lucky to have a balcony or a garden or a patio. Um, so I think for us moving forward as a, a community, it's thinking about how we utilize our spaces a lot more. So again, I've touched on oxygenating plants. That's key for indoor and outdoor. It's also what we do with the out, outside, you know, flexible living, of course, um, flexible products, um, these amazing products, which I'm showing on this page, they're leather, um, but you can keep them outdoors. It's, there's some amazing bits and pieces outside uh, you can use. So for me, it's always trying to find different products, unusual products, items that can be used in our day-to-day -day life moving forward. Um, they're not expensive, but you know, they have a longevity to them. So one beautiful piece um, of object dar, uh, well, you know, you'll have that for a lifetime as long as the quality's in, it's been made amazingly. So, these products which I'm showing here tick all those boxes various colors, they're happy, uh, they're interesting. Yeah, and unfortunately, if we're not lucky enough to have um, a balcony or a garden or a patch, 
grow your own veg uh, vegetables, um, herbs, of course, inside. They're very interesting growing herbs indoors. I've done it numerous times. Not only is it really pleasing, A, to grow your own produce, to cook from them, but the, the, the aroma from them are amazing. It, it really is very happy um, as you walk into a, a kitchen area. So we need to be conscious of those um, items moving forward. We're gonna see a lot more of those products being used. Now, this is the fun bit. This is kind of what I'm known for is adding fun, uh, the whimsical side of interior design. I love to be able to flex my design muscles. Luckily enough, I have clients which enable me to do all of these things. Now, this is color. I love color. Color can be used in everywhere, every format, just highlights. Let's not go too mad and have color on every single wall and ceiling. It's more about the feature and how you use them and how you light them. So our first little bit of fun here is a, a feather wall, uh, which we use for a, a charity. Bright pink, uh, because it was for breast cancer awareness. You'll also see on the other wall, it's been hand pleated paper wallpaper, hand stitched, amazing. Tracy Kendall is, is one, one of my all-time artisans, um, which I am a real advocate of her work. It's interesting and very exciting. The slide on the left-hand side, this is the one of my clients. Now, this is a bit of fun, as this is where we actually went out shopping for art pieces. Um, the axe um, is a Louis Vuitton and you break it in a case of fashion emergency. It's just a bit of fun. It's a main powder room for um, her guests um, as well as her family. So we like to add a bit of fun wherever we can, even down to large sculptures like the, the Hermes lollipop that's um, already dripping. It's just those little bits and pieces that should add a little bit of fun. It provokes a reaction. So you kind of experiment with confidence. Um, this application, which I'm just showing you now, uh, I had sticks of rock in this one of the coffer ceilings. Um, what was fun about it, it's color. Um, it's thinking about a product which would not normally be used for that application. Obviously sticks of rock you would eat. But I thought, well, why not? Why can't we use it for interior design? Um, it adds some interest, not only is the colour, it's the different heights, um, so we had texture, it meant it also had an amazing aroma as you walked in, um, and it created these amazing shadows on the floor. Um, it was actually haloed lighting in this application as well. So think about unusual products that you could manipulate for very unusual situations in an interior. You'll see also on the main slide, um, lots of sweeties. Um, I love my pink sweeties, but there you go. Um, and of course, at the back wall, uh, we were the first company in the UK to showcase uh, digital artwork. So we did a whole wall to wall, uh, floor to ceiling, nine bank, 55 inch TVs. Now the digital artwork was a moving digital artwork um, and it also had music to it. So it's also stimulating the senses, which is very important. You walked into this room, you could feel, touch, smell. There was plenty going on. It was interesting. Interior should be about stopping for a few seconds, thinking about it and appreciating what's in there. If everything is laid and looked, looks beautiful, sometimes you forget those items that you've had. So it's interesting when people come in to visit this space, and they suddenly see things that they have perhaps haven't seen before because there's so much of interesting layers they might not have um, noticed that item to begin with. So it's always interesting to have layering. So layering in an unconventional way. We know how to accessorize. Groups of three are always great. Now for me, I like to go slightly a little bit different. Um, and I, in this application, I had a glass dining table. The glass dining table had a mouse, so I actually put static pieces of artwork inside the glass mouth of the dining table. It's a bit of fun. Um, I kept a little story with it because everything I choose, there's always a story connected to it. It's chosen for a reason. It's not just plomped. 
it's it's been thought about um, to the ninth degree. So one of the pieces of artwork we had in the mouth of the dining table was a lady with these beautiful lips. Then of course on top of that I put on a frog, um, obviously uh, from Lalique, um, and of course it just evokes the story about uh, the princess and the frog kissing the frog and he turns into a prince so there are lots of little stories to all of these applications the little slide below you can see the layering so we have layered the wallpaper um, we've got this amazing light fitting from balsan um, and then we start layering up with the senses the natural flowers the roses all the textures the artisan made dining chairs the a silk kiln rug on the floor. It's all about capturing the inf uh, details, capturing the imagination of people coming to visit because there's so much to see and look at. Also, why not have a bit of fun? This is a slide uh, which we put in from a games room above um, and it slips straight down into the dining area. Great if you've got kids or great if you you're a kid in your own right and um let me just have a bit of fun with interiors it shouldn't just be stayed it should be exciting again think about applications where uh, which aren't necessarily designed for that particular space think slightly outside the box do lots of research um you know you've got to go out and see things touch things feel things you've got to engage with your clients you've got to engage with your suppliers you've got to see what's new out there and think outside the box. Don't always rely on what that application has been designed for. Think laterally. Now layering uh, with furniture and object dust. It's bringing it basically all together. Everything that I've just said, uh, these are some of uh, the applications, finished applications. Um, so in the first instance, it's all about art, it's art, art and the objet you know let's have a bit of fun again let's add our interesting art pieces let's sing let's highlight them um, let them stand out so you can still have a neutral uh, color palette and suddenly these interesting objects jump out at you so whether it is a chessboard or um, it's a, a mannequin in this instance um, it's a phone box an old phone box um, this is one of my signatures uh, this application was in Jordan um, these are great because you can actually um, utilize the technology for bringing it inside so you could phone up um, it's all usable so you could use it uh, to link into your house uh, one of the applications used it with a, as a disco we had music in there a glitter ball um, they're all practical but fun at the same time so let's add some fun into our interiors on the slide to the left hand side you can see where the use of light is interesting so i got rid of a stud wall um, in the application to the left hand side and glazed it completely it's a shame that uh, you you can't open up spaces so that's what i wanted to do in here this house was on different levels um, and there was a, it was a family in this house so wanted to make the uh, lower ground floor interesting that's where the swimming pool was actually so i wanted to make it inviting fun we had a jukebox and we had loads of different led colors in here um, i wanted to make sure that the main staircase you'd look around and look at the unexpected hence putting a, a glazing wall which was uh, three stories in height it just gives you that interest that peak of interest so you could be on the second third floor and you could actually still look down into the subterranean where there was something going on it was fun it was interesting it's that's what my designs are all about make things fun and interesting you know i even put in a punch bag in a dining space but why not you know it's fun it's usable it was used by the family um so even down to the horse boxes um, behind the uh, sofas you know you don't just have to have a console table you know just think about reusing recycling interesting pieces out there we'll be seeing more of that moving forward um, and utilizing those products that have been beautifully made in the first instance perhaps not loved because they're so used but now is the time to embrace those items and start using them um, in an interior 
again here we're bringing things together uh, this piece of objet d'art uh, is an amazing dog again um, it was a, an individual sculptor an artisan and the dog was made from christmas uh, toys again these things would be thrown away normally but an amazing artist decided yeah let's make a sculpture out of it so it's doing things like that it's thinking outside the box being creative being colorful um, even though this is a quite a neutral tone interior, that's where you need the pops of colour. Um, it's an interesting use of coffee table, um, sort of bright, sharp orange colour, but it's actually hovering on perspex. So again, it's playing with the use of space and light because light filters through the perspex base. Here again, we're going uh, to a, a different scenario. So you can see uh, the sculptures and the lighting, the colours, everything that we discussed in this interior. It's all about the artwork. Uh, we started with the artwork and worked around that. All the colours are warming, they're gold, they're beautiful, they're interesting. <coughs> artwork, <coughs> artwork was the most important key element in this interior opening up all the walls so there's lots of glazing sorry you have to excuse me i have a dog here <laughs> this is live um we even um made and designed this beautiful ceiling light uh which are different tones of gold and bronze uh, all made out of uh, leaves so again it's all about form and function and using natural products <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, then bringing it all together again, um, layering. So I love Perspex in a matter of format, uh, we use it. They're great for stands if you want to highlight um, pieces of art. They hover, they're interesting. You know, your eye gets drawn to them because it's of, a, of interest. How does that look? How does that work? Um, textures, so piling up your accessories. It's an art form again, its own right. Stylus accessorization is really important. It finishes uh, a scheme. It's all about lifestyle. So um, anything with glass, bronze, metals, perspex, paper, uh, wood, uh, whether it's lacquered, 50% lacquer, 20, 10, 80, it all contributes to an amazing scheme. It also highlights areas like pings from these lovely objects. And shadowing is so important uh, because it really can make or break um, an interesting space. Now, that's me on a very quick history of how to produce an amazing interior and what I've learned over the years. Um, and over to you, Grant. Sure. Hi. Can you hear me, Susan? Yes, I can. Perfect. Um, great. So that's been very, very interesting. Thank you. We have a question right up, right up at the start. Um, how has the digitalization affected interior designers with regards to textile design? So how has sort of, you know, the advent of people designing digitally affected textile design? Well, uh, for me, in the first instance, um, we still need to see samples regardless. We need to steal, feel, touch, etc. What we've noticed very recently is uh, people doing presentations with textiles via a Zoom and Skype. So people are actually showing us how products look, work. It's quite interesting actually, you know, historically reps would come to visit us, but now obviously we're seeing it online. What's nice about it is that you have almost like a one-to-one -one with them. Um, also, they can um, have big, great big uh, meterage where normally we would see little swatches. So with that, that they can waft it in the light, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but apart from that, we haven't noticed any difference. And we'll continue to still using sampling, which is absolutely key. Because um, yeah. we do need the true colours and the true samples. We need to feel it. Okay. And um, uh, how, can you, there's a student watching. So, you know, studying interior design. What advice would you give to students who are studying interior design? Oh, lovely. Okay. Um, I think in the first instance, uh, you need to look at everything. You need to absorb everything. Um, 
I have a little black book um, of interesting product samples that I've seen. Um, I want to keep them. I know that I will use it, it could be 10 years later. Uh, but for students out there, um, what I would suggest is look, feel, touch everything, take everything in. Look at how uh, joinery is made. Look at spaces. Uh, work out why people have put those windows all the way up to the ceiling floor. What is that room used for? Scaling is so important. I think a lot of our uh, designers and interior designers can generally um, design 3D in our head already. Um, computers are amazing nowadays. So, you know, when I was going to talking about colour, you know, there's lots of apps now where you can take a photograph of your room um, and uh, put in an app to see the colour, whether it's blue, yellow, whatever it is. Mm. And the app can show you what that room would look like um, in that colour. So there's lots of aids that I didn't have when I was um, a student that would really help visually straight away instantly. Mm. I would say you have to be really passionate about interior design. Yeah, mm. and both Susan and I lecture at the KLC School of Design. And, you know, it's wonderful to go and speak to the students about um, how they're learning and how they're, um, you know, how they want to learn and how they want to explore. And I think one of the biggest tips that I want to give people is use social media to find interesting, new and unusual makers. Look for people who aren't listed with the big you know, big stores and big companies because, and then, and then on Instagram, build relationships with them, ask them about their craft. Susan mentioned earlier, and you can see in this image on the right hand side, the pleated white wall wallpaper. And I mean, that is made by Tracy Kendall, who I, I shared the name with you earlier. And she creates, she also did that pink feather wallpaper. She creates the most incredible wallpaper but it's mostly all bespoke so you can't buy it from a shop you can't buy it online she creates with you so it's completely bespoke and she does beautiful things i mean she's done incredible incredible wallpapers so look for interesting makers that are creative and can help take your ideas to another level i'd also just going to backtrack to the lovely student that's asked the question I think the more knowledge you have of products, um, it makes you a better designer. It gives you the wisdom um, and the confidence uh, to sell that product. I would also listen to your gut, that little inner voice. Listen to it because it kind of is telling you whether the product is right or wrong. So listen to that. Also have drive, um, be excited. Uh, it's really interesting uh, to see a young interior designer full of enthusiasm and uh, seeing new products, new new interiors, it's it's lovely to see, and that needs to happen. I think also it's um, about networking, talking to people. You kind of need somebody you can lean on. You need support as a student. So mm. um, there's there's lots of things online uh, to motivate yourself. You know, you're always going to question yourself. I still do myself. I look at something. And think, Is that right? Is that right? I have to take, put it down and then come back to it and reevaluate. So there's, you know, there's, there's no harm in just revisiting things because that will clear, it will clear your mind and it'll give you a better interior once you've revised it um, and come back to it. Just take a deep breath and, and start and relook. Yeah, we've got lots of questions, Susan. Um, okay. How will the current scenario affect interior designers? Interesting. Now, apart from the usual, a lot of uh, presentations are being done obviously by Zoom or Skype. That is going to continue. Um, I think that even, you know, us going on site can all be done now, um, you know, with other client or site guy or whoever, uh, just using the phone and, and taking images and those sorts of things. Um, however, it's still important that, you know, products are boarded, they're sent to clients, you know, the postal is still being used, you know, couriers are still being used, uh, clients still need to feel touched and, and, and get excited about the products. What we need to avoid is being so 
disconnected uh, because we are more office bound um, that will definitely affect the enthusiasm for mm -hmm. interior design so it needs to still be exciting we still need to be the end of that phone we still need to be the end of that computer we want to we want people to feel that they're having an individual bespoke service so i think there's just going to be a lot more office based rather than site based but communication will go up tenfold with clients and suppliers Totally agree. Totally agree. Um, okay, I'm just having a look at some more questions here. So we've got, um, what is the name of the artist that created the accessories like the dog that you showed us? Oh, there's quite, <laughs> quite a few. Um, there's quite a few there. So in the first instance, uh, look at, um, I've forgotten his name. Andrew Martin. Yeah, Andrew Martin. Um... Oh, oh, oh gosh. <laughs> um, it'll come to us. Let's move to the next question. Um, right. Uh, how would you use lighting for small spaces and how can you play with colours to create optical illusions and bigger spaces? Okay, well, that's interesting. Optical illusions. Now, a lot of interior designers forget ceilings. So, a lot of what we're doing at the moment, we're painting the walls and the ceilings exactly the same colour, uh, the joinery, the whole thing. This actually stretches and makes the space feel bigger. If you really want to accentuate the, the height, just paint the ceiling a darker colour, um, and that makes the, the space feel a lot bigger. Now, secondary colours or any uh, colours on, on the wheel, um, also for feature walls, really important because again, that uh, makes the space feel bigger. Just be careful about what colour you do use. Um, you don't want to go too primary because the smaller the space and the bolder colour, it feels a bit more enclosed. So lighter colours with a highlight of one wall, concentrate on the ceiling, it's very important. Um, and you'll find that's easy steps to making a smaller space feel a lot bigger. Lighting in a smaller space, what I would use is anything dimmable, five amp ball, um, anything that's washing upwards. I wouldn't go downwards from the ceiling, but mm. anything from the floor, uh, table lamps, um, anything, anything standard lamps, anything to elongate the walls and stretch the walls uh, would be that would be the way forward for. And making the space feel bigger. Perfect. So uh, Kapil says, hi, I'm from New Delhi, India. Love your work. Thank you, Kapil. Lovely to, lovely to meet you. Uh, another question. The majority of people don't have the budget or the space to create interiors on this scale. How can these be, how can these principles be translated into more traditional sized residential homes? Okay, well, that's really easy. I have, um, a secondary company called Phoenix Interior Design that deals with developers. So we always have to be conscious of spacing and size and budgets. There are plenty of products out there um, which are of a similar ilk to what I have shown you on these slides here. And please be aware some of these items in here really aren't expensive. Um, now I'm going to actually revert back to one of our uh, little images earlier. Now some of the objets are in here the, the company that I was thinking of earlier that completely went from my mind, Jimmy Martin. He has got some amazing products, some of them very cost effective. You can have some um, amazing fun with scatter cushions. You know, let's have a bit of fun and wow. He's got some very cool bits and pieces um, which are fun, they're playful, they're whimsical, um, and they're not expensive. So, okay, even down to this slide here, okay, this is a leak, but you know, the actual drum glass vase um, is actually from Ikea. So, you know, um, mm. why not just mix match, uh, get everything some online, get bits online, you can get them from retail, um, but you can still have fun in, in small spaces, uh, tight budgets, this is all doable, um, very doable. Cool. Um, right, and what color, are there, is there any particular color, colors that are trending at the moment that people are using that's popular well again that's i would have said uh, a different color a couple of months ago 
Okay. Now, uh, because of the lockdown, it's shifted. It's all about the positive colours. Yeah. So it and it's all about the greenery coming into those rooms as well. So spider plants, etc. Um, but it's all about soothing, positive colours, mm. also happy colours. So yellows, oh. brilliant. Um, it, they're distressing. They're you know um, they add the concentration. They're happy colours, and people want a bit of theatre they want a bit of happiness you know we've all been struck by uh, this awful virus so we want to feel hugged yellows all those tones are great because it makes us feel happy sunshine colors are great so i'm seeing more of a shift to those colors than i would from grays which you know are great for a neutral base color uh, but at the moment we just need a bit of fun and positivity so definitely the yellows and the soothing colors of the pale greens nothing too bright um, but those uh, secondary uh, third colours. And lastly, um, uh, how do you keep up with the fast changing trends? Oh, well, that's quite easy because unfortunately, I'm probably um, part of making those changes happen. Um, it's all about seeing, feeling, and touching. You know, our industry is all about uh, being excited, it's seeing ahead. Uh, when I'm specking up for blocks of apartments or hotels, I have to look five years ahead. So I have to see what the trends are going to be in this five year uh, time scale. A lot of that is of course down to as well, what my suppliers are also looking at. So we have to work as a little community to see what is coming through, um, shapes, patterns, colors, um, and how we can manipulate all of those into new interiors in five years time. So we're always looking at new products and new things um, and keeping abreast of it. The simplest thing I would say is just look at fashion. Um, interior design is very um, in line with fashion and fashion colours for the here and now and the instant. But for us as interior designers, we need to be looking beyond that um, for the five years minimum. Okay. Susan, can you take another question? Of course. Yeah. Um, in reference to the question before about studying interior design, when you finish studying interior design, what is the best advice to get started? An internship um, at more than one interior design uh, studio or anything else? Yeah, absolutely. Internships, for absolutely more than one, because every interior designer, they, we all have the same sort of core um, ethic. Um, but a lot of interior designers, they might concentrate or specialize in show houses or private clients or hotels or uh, yachts, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a whole melee of disciplines that you can go into. So the more experience you get, absolutely, that is key. But it's also key for you as a person and growing and also to find out what discipline really gets you going. Because when you go into interior design, you will need to love your job. And if you're doing... Uh, designing something that really doesn't tick your box you know you're not going to have the enthusiasm to take it forward so the experience the more experience you can get absolutely mm. i think also um you know you need the drive anyway um i think interior design it's something that uh is is natural it's almost inherent um so you need just to build on that um it's all it's in it's um, in instinctive um, interior design so you can easily think yeah okay i'm going to be interior designer for hotels or whatever so it's all about again listening to your gut find out what you, know, you love uh, what you really want to focus on so the more experienced the better and not just think about the uk you know there's plenty of amazing practices abroad um, if you can do that and wish to do that because again, different countries have different cultures. So it's interesting to see how you as an interior designer can blossom in different environments. Mm. And um, Susan, our lovely friend from Chicago, Tanya Thompson has yeah. popped in and she said, are there any colors that you absolutely hate working with? Fun <laughs> question, Tanya. <laughs> um, right, well. <laughs> It's a tricky question because, of course, um, when you pick up a private client, um, you know, you have to think about the products they already have. You know, some of those have incorporated colours which perhaps don't rock your boat, you know. Um, mm. So but you have to uh, be sympathetic. You have to, you have to have a lot of empathy with your client and the products that they have. So what you have to do is manipulate those items and tone perhaps that colour that you really don't like down. So you don't pull that out in the rest of the interior in the space. 
for me, um, there isn't a colour um, I don't like, but there are, there's one colour which always becomes problematic because it changes so uh, badly uh, with different uh, natural lights, uh, electric light. And strangely, that is lilac. That's a very tricky colour because that absorbs so much light uh, from the surroundings. So that lovely, very pale lilac sometimes just goes a dirty green. So that's probably the most problematic colour for me, um, where it just doesn't, it doesn't work particularly. Um, so I try to avoid that one. Okay, great. And some people are asking, you know, how to get in touch. We're going to be sending out an email to everyone just saying thank you. And there's, there'll be a contact details on there. We also just want to mention that um, Susan's launched her shop today and it's Yay. called Iggy Loves. So that's very exciting. Um, I've just popped a, popped a message in the chat so you can hop along to our website and just see our new shop that's launched with some of those lovely leather, leather handmade outdoor baskets. Um, so yeah, it's all very exciting. Thank you everyone for attending today. It's been, it's been really fun. Susan, have you enjoyed it? I'm sure you have. I have. And my last little, um, bit of tidbit is to everybody out there is listening apart from keep safe, be happy, keep motivated. This is the best job in the world. So I want everyone to enjoy it moving forward. Um, take baby steps if you're just starting, but it will grow organically. Believe in yourself, um, have the foundation set uh, down firmly. So when you start off, when you start building a business, as long as you've got those solid foundations, it'll never let you down. Super, thank you. And we're getting comments from people saying, thank you very much, excellent presentation. So that's really been wonderful. Thank you everyone. Um, it's been so lovely.